Hi, and welcome to Indigo Starfire. My name is Bevan, and in this video, I'm going to be doing some quick little love notes from your person. This is going to be a message cards only reading, and there are four groups to choose from. Group one is the Green Obsidian. Group two is the Black Tourmaline. Group three is the blue kyanite. And group four is the amethyst. So if you want to take a moment to center, focus on your breathing, and feel whichever group, maybe multiple groups, or perhaps all of the groups that you're most drawn to. I'll give you a minute to make your selection and then we'll get right into it. And there are timestamps in the description box of the video for each group if you would like to jump ahead. Hi, group one. You chose the green obsidian. So I'm going to be getting three cards from three different decks and let's see what does your person want you to know right now from their higher self. Okay, and they say, you are my heaven on earth. So this is definitely somebody who's in their feels right now. If you are in separation from one another, they are very nostalgic at this point in time. This is the energy of knowing what you have now that it's gone. It's bringing the idea of like a fall from grace, wandering very aimlessly around, uh, recognizing the value of the way your light filled their life at one point in time that it may have really required distance for them to appreciate more deeply. Um, this is an energy of just kind of struggling to find joy in a lot of ways, going through the motions of their day-to-day -day reality, kind of wandering, um, feeling a very gray existence, a very lackluster existence, something where they may also be in this energy of um, kind of comparing what they have had with you, what they've experienced with you, to what they have known of love and partnerships before. A sense of the experience with you has been very next level in a lot of ways. Um, that you may have checked a lot of the boxes for them as far as intellectual attraction, physical attraction, um, you know, a lot of common interests, a lot of chemistry between you, but then there's also this spiritual component um, that may have been very triggering, very confusing to them at some point in time. This may have caused them to run from you um, because it was so out of the ordinary of what they've known and experienced of partnerships up to this point in time. But really in this process of like distance, they're, they're starting to be able to see just how precious this element is, um, how this is something that has been notably absent from other connections that they've had even a person or circumstances that they had originally thought were kind of like the love of their life. Nothing would, would ever have been able to top that situation. It's just, it's this added element of this electricity, this intensity, that in many ways what they've experienced with you, no matter how brief um, or in-depth that might have been, it, it, 
and on many level, levels surpasses what they have known and experienced of love and partnership and intimacy before. So a lot of longing for that, um, wishing that they had made different choices and could find a way um, to kind of access your world once again, struggling to kind of pick themselves up out of a particular vibration or a circumstance that they find themselves in, in order to um, kind of raise the vibration in this situation to um, elevate this connection once again to that place of levity. They also say, I blame others instead of taking responsibility. So this ties into the idea of in these wanderings, they are doing a lot of soul searching. This person could be in hermit mode right now, kind of just going to work, taking care of, uh, you know, their kind of like bare minimum necessities for themselves, maybe um, being very withdrawn from, from friends, from other activities that they at one point in time used to enjoy, spending a lot of alone time reflecting. Um, if they had, you know, been very unconscious about these elements of themselves before, a tendency to self-sabotage, um, you know, to, to kind of run from from the intensity of connection like what they've experienced with you or you know other situations in their past where a certain threshold was crossed, a certain layer of vulnerability was um, expected or was experienced. And this may be something that's been historically or systematically very triggering for this individual. Um, it feels like in this period of kind of just this malaise, this kind of gray energy that they are sitting in at this point in time, they they have no other choice but to like look within, look around at the life they've created, at the choices and what that has yielded for themselves. And kind of in this energy of being very withdrawn, they, they may find themselves in an absence of people outside to blame. Um, almost like you're gone from their life and yet this feeling still remains within themselves. Um, that they had projected blame onto you about maybe putting a lot of pressure on on them, triggering them, backing them into a corner, um, expecting something out of them that they weren't prepared to become or to give to you. It's this sense of kind of like longing and yearning that they've almost pushed away wish fulfillment in a certain manner. Um, and they don't necessarily feel to be at the point of like taking steps to correct this tendency to self-sabotage or to push others away, but they are at least aware of it at this point in time. They're, they're looking at this more directly than they have in quite some time or ever quite possibly. And they also say no one compares to you. So that really confirms that idea of they are thinking back over their, their history of love and romance and partnership and you know people that at one point in time had felt like very significant connections. It's, it's almost like you've moved up a notch from even um, you know, first love, the love of their life, the most intense connection, maybe somebody that they had been pining for, they've been holding space for, hoping that that person would return, would reciprocate feelings and affection, would start to prioritize them. And as a consequence, it's almost like their heart was unavailable when the two of you met one another. They pushed away wish fulfillment, this gift and blessing of, of the connection that the universe had provided for them. It's kind of like a like a surrogate in many ways, but almost the next level of what's possible beyond whoever or whatever they were holding space for. And it's only in this energy of having generated distance or, or experiencing the loss of you and the connection that they're seeing that they almost were holding out for the wrong thing. They were invested in the wrong direction. Um, that person or that situation that they were very stuck on from their past what they have experienced with you. Um, again, no matter how brief the connection was or how long and intense, it surpasses so much of what they have known of, um, you know, kind of the pinnacle of success as far as love and partnerships up to this point in time, which which feels to be adding to, to a level of regret, um, kind of searching within themselves. How do they move back in your direction again? And they also say, I'm sorry. So they may be considering reaching out with some kind of an apology or just really sitting in this energy of kind of looking around, seeing the ways in which they got in the way of the success of this partnership. If they had been in a state of, you know, maybe being very triggered, blaming that that felt easier than taking personal responsibility. Um, you know, it's it's an energy that they are now leaning into regret. Um, emotions have cooled. Tempers have cooled. This, this very triggered energy has subsided in a certain way. And it has been replaced with, with a deep sense of like melancholy and longing, wishing they could turn back time and make different choices. 
and they also say let's talk so this can tie into the idea of wanting to reach out for with an apology wanting to say sorry but really struggling on kind of where to begin what to say um, how to explain kind of their motivations what they have learned what they have discovered in this in this period of separation depending on how that occurred it almost might feel that it's going to take more than just an i'm sorry to to course correct that it's going to require deep vulnerability, heart-to-heart -heart conversations, a level of emotional expression that they had denied you in the past. That might have been the breaking point. That might have been when they ran or when they pushed you away, when it got to that threshold. And yet again, even in the distance, they're still brought back to that point, that crossroads of needing to dive in further, needing to open up their heart to love. They may have deep trust issues based on even someone from the past who had rejected them, who had, you know, taken them for granted. It's like the idea of hurt people hurt people, not as an excuse, but just as kind of an explanation on the stance that this person is seems to be operating from. They may not have been very good at dealing with their emotions, so they just put up a wall. Uh, behind that wall, though, they've been coexisting with that hurt, with that heartbreak, and it has um, resulted in kind of this energy of projection, kind of pushing people away who get too close to that wound, which may still be very fresh with in them even if it was something that happened kind of more remotely in their past this feels to be something that they're they're in the process of looking at right now they have no choice but to look in the mirror at this point in time and they're not really liking what it is they're seeing and they also say our chemistry is so strong right now so an intense connection that still endures despite the distance, despite the separation. They may be getting a lot of signs and synchronicities about you, feeling your energy around them, almost like a companion in this period of darkness. Um, the deeper that they are kind of looking in the mirror at themselves, the more that it is compelling them back in your direction, starting to really understand how they have self-sabotage which is making them yearn for you know this very high vibrational energy that that you hold within you that you emit that the two of you generated together almost very electrically in the connection between the two of you um, that it feels very lonely it feels very cold at a distance from you and there's this yearning for that warmth for that closeness once again but a bit of confusion about what's the right formula of, of openness and, and self-restraint, um, you know, what they need to contribute, what they need to reciprocate in this situation in order to create kind of an elixir of healing between the two of you. That, that can be very fearful, something that they're confronting, and an openness and a vulnerability that might be, uh, that's that threshold of the comfort zone. And in order to move back in your direction, it also um, requires kind of this growth beyond what they're comfortable with, how they've been operating in love and partnerships um, their whole life or after, you know, a certain event that kind of caused them to put that wall up. It's it's kind of that, that place where your paths diverge. They need to come back to that crossroads and choose a different direction. And it may be just as easy as kind of like opening up and talking about feelings and also just as difficult as that. It feels to be something that fear is really holding them back or uncertainty, sort of what would the results of this be to open up, to express things, to um, break the silence between the two of you to move in closer. Is this something that would, um, you know, kind of have a very disastrous effect? Would it make matters worse? Or is it possible to generate healing in this situation? So it feels like they're examining all of this, all these different angles of this situation at this point in time. And they also say, I'm sorry for all the pain that I have caused you. I need you to know that it hurts me knowing that I hurt you. So there's that energy of hurt people hurt people. Um, even if they are silent, they're they're going through the motions, they're, they're putting on this front, this facade that everything's okay. They are recognizing that their conduct, their behavior in this circumstance, how things ended, their role in all of that, um, it is a direct result of this hurt, this unhealed wound that they are harboring within. There is regret at almost punishing you for um, the scar left behind in their emotional body by somebody else. Um, this may have been something that they've just been kind of moving blindly through life with 
kind of reacting from this place for quite some time. But in this situation, this circumstance, it's almost it's brought to a screeching halt. This this kind of overreactive energy, this projective energy. They they've really sort of um, stumbled and and been confronted by their own reflection in a certain manner, and it's it's starting to make them kind of look around more deeply at things, um, you know, hurts of the past that are still having an effect on them in the present and and kind of what they're doing with new blessings, new opportunities for love and partnership. Um, so a lot of regret, um, you know, kind of having a difficult time almost forgiving themselves for what has taken place, which feels to be another aspect of kind of that roadblock, which is stopping them from reaching out and kind of asking forgiveness from you. They also say, you are the one that I want to be with. So this ties into that idea of the energy of comparing um, as they are looking back over the cast of characters who have pulled at their heartstrings at various points in time. You far exceed the competition. You stand out above all the rest. You fulfill a lot of what they are looking for in a partnership and you bring to the table spiritually and energetically qualities that they didn't even know they were looking for that may have been so outside of the ordinary or unexpected that they had a very fear-based reaction and sort of pushed this away. Now there is this sense of, since they have kind of touched on these energies, they've experienced this, they've tasted this, they've savored this, nothing else suffices. It's it's a hunger that they have for you and, and the experience the two of you had with one another, the energy that was created, uh, this chemistry, this this electricity, um, that they're, they're almost just moving through the world um, without this brightness that when they were in closer proximity, they took for granted. It's something that they've not been able to find elsewhere. It's something they have never experienced before. And it's something which is, it keeps pulling them to that, that crossroads of fear and encouraging them to take that leap of faith outside of the ordinary to, to open themselves up in a way that they may not be accustomed to or that um, brings up a lot of these fears within, but is also the very step that is necessary to generate healing for themselves and in this situation. And they also say, why do you still love me after all that I've done? So this ties into the idea of difficulty um, for giving themselves for their conduct in this situation in the past. It might not have even been anything that that egregious and yet they know deep within that whatever this reaction was whatever their approach was to you in this circumstance however they you know put the brakes on in this situation that um, truly and deeply it stems from a very fearful and wounded place within it was not a true reflection of their feelings but was rather the result of the manipulation of fear within themselves. Um, and it's something where they're having a hard time coming to terms with that, which feels to be keeping them at a distance, at the brink of, of expressing something, wanting to speak truth, wanting to speak that apology, very fearful of making matters worse, um, not being sure kind of how to navigate these emotional waters, and not even really fully trusting that they are worthy of another opportunity with you. It's almost a sense of that they've squandered some kind of blessing and they're kind of sitting in a lack mentality, a bit of a pity party at this point in time, um, kind of leaning more into the sense of perhaps this is just their, their fate at this point forward to have this kind of sense within of they've they've touched on something very unique very high vibrational very irreplaceable and through these kind of this carelessness or the mishandling of this opportunity that it's almost just their punishment in a way to kind of move through the rest of their life um, always longing always wanting always wishing that they could turn back the hands of time um, so not necessarily geared toward forward momentum, just kind of circling around that, um, really held back by a lot of fears. It's going to take a leap of faith beyond a comfort zone in order to bring change in this circumstance and situation. Uh, but this does feel like somebody who is in this process of um, self-reflecting, deep contemplation at this point in time. So I'm going to get some initials, and this can be a first, middle, or last name of you or this person, or it could spell something out, just whatever resonates for you. got R, W, J, L, P, 
A, U, Y, and D. So those are your messages. I hope that they resonated with you and that you enjoyed the reading. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, or share. If you'd like a personal reading, I offer them through my Etsy shop, and there's a link in the description box of the video for that. I offer a variety of pre-recorded video readings, written readings, and channeled letters. Turnaround time on everything is five to seven days from the time of purchase. I also sell handmade jewelry, dream catchers, and sun catchers if you're interested in checking any of that out as well. And I've launched a second channel here on YouTube, which is called Lady of the Dawn Tarot. There's a link in the description box as well as in the channel section of my page for that. The format over there consists of pick a cards and general energy readings related to subjects such as spirituality, ascension, wellness, and self-love. So if that sounds interesting, I invite you to check that channel out. I thank you for your support there as well as for your continued support here on this channel. I hope to see you again in another reading. Please take care and be well. Hi group two. We chose the black tourmaline. So I'm going to be getting three cards from three different decks and let's see what does your person want you to know right now from their higher self. Okay, and they say we are destined to be together. So your person feels a strong soulmate bond between the two of you. They are very focused at this point in time upon your meeting, the circumstances that have aligned and led to that point. Um, they may possibly even be viewing you as their twin flame, a past life soul connection. Um, you know, just something that is outside of the ordinary, that it is beyond an accident that you have come into the awareness of one another in this lifetime and in this manner. Um, a sense of really looking at kind of the, the bigger layers of this situation, of the energies between the two of you, starting to really connect the dots in some way. Um, that, you know, your meeting of one another, your experiences with one another, your interactions with one another has represented almost a turning of the page for them in a lot of ways, uh, a deepening of their concepts of love and partnership, maybe even the exploration of ideas such as soul connections, soulmates, twin flames, things that had never been on their radar before, part of their understanding based on a lot of kind of signs and synchronicities strange occurrences, activations, awakenings within them. Um, they've been forced to kind of look outside of the box beyond just the typical, um, you know, sort of boy meets girl, girl meets boy, boy meets boy, girl meets girl, you know, whatever that looks like, that there's something more to this. There's a, a greater kind of principle that is unfolding here beyond just uh, kind of romantic love and partnership. It may be something that very much intimidated them in the past when they first sort of started having this inclination, seeing a lot of these signs and synchronicities. Um, it pushed them beyond their comfort zone in some manner. Um, a sense of fearing kind of the alignment of these circumstances, this, this ripple effect, um, that kind of this change that has occurred within them through meeting you and how that has impacted all these various areas of their life. Um, if they had needed to kind of pause or pull themselves back from the situation in order to seek more information, kind of search that, that guidance within, pray about this, meditate about this, just whatever that looks like, 
they've almost reached this this point of clarity or this conclusion um, that any kind of mistrust of the of the situation that they had previously um, was a bit misplaced or a bit hasty in some manner that what they had been fearing as far as these unknown elements and aspects of this situation in fact are um, the paved stones upon which a different kind of path forward in love and partnership and also in their life in general is now available to them by virtue of this connection and having um, intersected with you in this lifetime. They also say I get excited every time I see you. So this is speaking about like the electricity between the two of you, a lot of activations, a lot of downloads, um, a sense of almost like conversations within conversations that take place. Like when they've, when they've interacted with you, it's almost like the telepathy between the two of you runs concurrent to the words that are spoken in the physical sense. This may have been very unnerving, very unsettling, very agitating for this person in the past. Maybe they're a very practical individual. They're they're a very logical individual. They're they're not open to spirituality normally or, or concepts about energy and um, you know telepathy and psychic sense and, and higher self and soul and, and all these different kind of uh, concepts and layers. And yet they've experienced that directly in the situation with you. Um, it excites their curiosity and it also feels to be something which really agitates or triggers a lot of fear of the unknown known within them. This may have sent them on kind of this path of research, going down these different rabbit holes um, to come out at this point that they are at now of feeling that it's very much destined that the two of you have aligned. Um, it doesn't feel that they quite know what the point of that is, what that destination is, but it is a destiny that you have, some greater kind of purpose or experience together than what you have shared up to this point in time. And they also say, can we take things slow? I'm guarded. So there's that element of fear, fear of the unknown. You represent um, an experience that is very much outside of their comfort zone. On the surface, you may be um, very much in alignment with their usual type and expectation, but there's just this extra element. There's, it feels like something which is stirring an awakening within them that has them a little bit unnerved. It has them a little bit uncertain. Uh, it feels like even beyond the interactions that the two of you have with one another, kind of when you go your separate ways, you know, the conversation ends or, or you part ways if you're, you know, spending time with one another one-on-one, -on -one, the ripple effects of this, you know, energetically feeling you around them, how other areas of their life are impacted through this. It's it's like the energy you produce with one another spills over and has affected all aspects of their life. Um, they may be struggling to kind of maintain balance, maintain the status quo, kind of straddling two worlds, um, the life they were living before they met you and kind of what is what is becoming out of this process of, of having interacted with you in this lifetime. Um, there's a hesitation here, a need to, to gather more information before fully trusting in this idea of this destined connection. It's like they've reached the aha moment, the epiphany of, you know, this is something special spectacular. This is something special, but they're not quite sure if they're wanting to follow through on that path to embark fully to, to kind of explore into the unknown and to see where does this lead. They also say mistakes are the soul's lessons. So if they have pushed you away or put up their guard in some manner, done something that has caused you to pull back your energy, maybe out of a very triggered stance within them, they're, they're regretting that. They're wishing that they had opened up more that they had discussed more with you as far as maybe some of these signs, these synchronicities, these phenomena, these occurrences. Um, they may have mentioned these things in passing and, and tried to just keep a very cool exterior that it was that it was okay, it was not a big deal just ordinary things, but it feels like inside it was very unnerving for them. It was a lot of kind of like, what's going on? This feels sort of spooky. This feels weird. This feels out of the ordinary. I don't feel like myself what's happening. And they may have almost just pushed the connection away, pushed you away, even subtly in energetic sense as they're trying to kind of remain grounded and rooted in their material reality and what was predictable and known and familiar to them. And kind of the byproduct of that is some sort of distance that's been created, it feels like, between the two of you, which they're regretting. They're, they're kind of wishing that they had 
leaned more into, you know, opening up, exploring this, getting your feedback, comparing notes with you in a certain sense, rather than just kind of um, anchoring themselves down and kind of pushing away or operating in a stance of denial to, to a certain extent. They also say, I feel sad. So any distance that has been created, even just awkwardness between the two of you, it doesn't feel good for them. They're, they're missing kind of the higher vibration that you experienced at one point in time. Um, they're miss, missing almost like the, the fresh energy, the newness, um, when everything was starting to really kind of pop and come online for them, starting to really activate before the velocity of that took hold and almost made them very overwhelmed. This can also talk about the energy with all of these kind of awakenings and activations. They may be kind of in this dark night of the soul right now. This may be something that was very triggering for them and caused them to kind of like push you away, lash out in some manner, um, or just in some sense directly or, you know, very kind of unintentionally, inadvertently, something that they've kind of just in a defensive mechanism, just sort of pushed and, and created this distance. Um, it's a sense of loneliness. It's a sense of kind of like wandering in that personal darkness at this point in time, uh, maybe like an existential crisis, trying to find meaning out of this circumstance and reconcile who they are with who they used to be and who they are becoming. They also say fear held me back. So another confirmation of that guardedness, that fearfulness, that skepticism, um, needing more information. In some way, this connection, the sensations of it, the experiences of it, challenges their worldview, um, as is the case with a lot of high-level soul connections, twin flame connections, where there's really this spark and awakening. And, you know, what was up becomes down. Um, you know, what was black becomes white, becomes gray, becomes um, kind of all colors. And it's it's just this energy of, of this expansion that this person, for a lot of you, this wasn't even on their radar for a lot of people, they weren't even spiritual in nature. They're very like tied to mundane reality. So what has been kind of um, blasted open within them, uh, these these experiences, you know, the idea of like telepathy and, and feeling you energetically and all of these signs and synchronicities, it's so outside of what is what is known and comfortable for them that fear has been that reaction. It's been the ego trying to kind of cling to what was practical, what was known, what was a point of consideration before, but it's almost like this door has been opened and there's no closing it um, at this point in time. They also say, I'm still healing. There's so much that I'm going through and have gone through. So another confirmation there of like spiritual awakening, ascension energy. If you're still in contact with this person, they may be exerting a lot of energy to not appear bothered, to appear very nonchalant, keeping a lot from you. They may be coming across as very guarded, very secretive at this point in time. It feels that it's a struggle for them to show up to their, their worldly reality at this point. Um, they are no longer fitting and resonating with the life that they were living in many ways because vibrationally so much has changed for them. Um, as much as they try not to kind of like look and explore and um, try to find meaning out of this experience with you, they can't help but to kind of go down that rabbit hole to, to do that sort of search within um, at the point of sort of having some answers but still so much many questions and very fearful of kind of talking about this, not even being sure how to really articulate what they are going through, how to open those lines of conversation to you. They also say, I don't want to be rejected, so I stay silent. I feel safer not knowing the outcome. So kind of a lack mentality, um, a bit of the, the overprotective ego in a certain manner. Um, you know, again, if you represent sort of their type and, and in a surface level sense, there there's just something where they're they're feeling very inadequate compared to the energy that's generated between the two of you, something that you hold spiritually within that they have now caught a glimpse of or they have been made aware of. Um, you act as a mirror for them in a lot of ways of both potential and what stands in the way of that. Um, and so it, it feels to be something where, you know, they're they're kind of trying to remain in their comfort zone, yet feeling very, very called and very pulled towards you, but uh, safer in the silence at this point in time, just kind of nursing these wounds very quietly within, a little bit of sort of feeling sorry for themselves at this time and very confused about sort of where to go from here, how to evolve within themselves and with these changes and also in the circumstance with you. 
They also say, please don't cry or be sad because of me. So they are reject. They are recognizing how any kind of you know fear of rejection may have caused them to reject you in some way, even like energetically reject you, put up that wall, put up that guard. It may be something where you know they're they're able to just sense into you energetically, and they can they can tell that you're heartbroken, that you're disappointed, um, you know that you're 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 trying to maintain and be strong and and carry on despite what has happened and where things are at between the. Two two of you right now. Um, if you're still in contact and it's just gotten a little awkward, a little weird, a little distant, um, you know, they, they feel a lot of regret for that. They're, they're wishing that they could open up to you and kind of explain their side of things to let you know what has motivated their actions that have created these results. But at this point in time, it feels like they're just, they're swimming in a lot of confusion, not really sure how to put things to words, not really sure what's going on within them, struggling to kind of show up to the life that, that they are living presently and at the same time in this process of active transformation and expansion um, in terms of their, their concepts, their perceptions of things, emotionally a lot's shifting and changing, um, you know, and, and kind of just trying to maintain optimism but feeling very weighed down at present by by what is happening um, you know again this idea of kind of like don't cry or be sad and like I feel sad definitely you know dark night of the soul energy where um, it feels like they're they're kind of trying to hold on for dear life to not be, be totally just uh, to succumb to that to have everything transformed um, and so it's it's creating a lot of like agitation or pressure and tension in this person that may be uh, projected onto you and the situation or your picking it up or, or things have occurred recently that have created this kind of like wall that's gone up, a bit of awkwardness and distance um, in this situation. But there's a lot happening behind the scenes and within them at this point that um, they're struggling to kind of gain perspective of but not yet feeling ready to express and talk about. So I'm going to get some initials and this can be a first, middle, or last name of you or this person or it could spell something out, just whatever resonates for you. Okay, we've got C, A, V, M, K, Z, B, Y, S, F, I, J, L, U, H, and G. So those are your messages. I hope that they resonated with you and that you enjoyed the reading. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, or share. If you'd like a personal reading, I offer them through my Etsy shop, and there's a link in the description box of the video for that. I offer a variety of pre-recorded video readings, written readings, and channeled letters. Turnaround time on everything is five to seven days from the time of purchase. I also sell handmade jewelry, dream catchers, and sun catchers if you're interested in checking any of that out as well. And I've launched a a second channel here on YouTube, which is called Lady of the Dawn Tarot. There's a link in the description box as well as in the channel section of my page for that. The format over there consists of pick a cards and general energy readings related to subjects such as spirituality, ascension, wellness, and self-love. So if that sounds interesting, I invite you to check that channel out. I thank you for your support there as well as for your continued support here on this channel. I hope to see you again in another reading. Please take care and be well. Hi, group three. Chose the blue kyanite. So I'm gonna be getting three cards from three different decks and let's see, what does your person want you to know right now from their higher self?
Okay, and they say, I am not happy in this situation right now. So distance, separation between the two of you. Um, they're feeling it very acutely at this point in time. They may have gone through a period recently of trying to stuff or suppress this, distract themselves in a certain way, um, You know, maybe partying a lot, uh, working long hours, um, filling their life with surface level things in order to avoid the emotional body, the heart space. For some of you, they may also be in a third party connection, something that they got into very impulsively, something that, um, you know, two people who are, are compatible maybe on the surface level, but it is just that. It is surface level chemistry. This can also tie into a very non-committal energy, kind of a player energy, wanting to just keep their options open, not being committed to anyone, um, playing the field and, and just really um, the idea of kind of the shadow side of you only live once, um, kind of a revolving door of, of people that they are exchanging energy with um, and, and sort of circumstances that they are in, just a very non-committal and kind of like a flighty energy, an indecisive energy, um, maybe having a hard time committing to things in a, in a wide variety of ways in their life at this point in time. Um, and at one stage, that sort of uh, perception of freedom could have made them feel very empowered. It could have been very much in alignment with uh, the direction that they, that they wanted to head, where they, where they wanted to be. But it's almost like the, the, the luster has worn off of that. All that glitters is not, in fact, gold. Uh, there's a deep loneliness and a longing within them that whatever this these tactics, these kind of surface level distractions, however they are trying to numb and avoid the emotional body at this point in time, it's it's no longer sufficing. It's no longer working. Uh, they're no longer drawn into that direction. Uh, work that they have been avoiding within themselves, addressing feelings, addressing wounds within that created distance or ways in which they sabotage this connection. They're being drawn back into that space, into that place of looking within themselves, um, owning up to some things, addressing some things that may be cycles or problems that they've been needing to deal with for quite some time and they keep pushing it off. It's the idea of like burning the candle at both ends and it's really catching up with them their health may be um, kind of not doing so well, um, their general mood and disposition may be suffering to a certain extent, um, you know, people may be kind of like moving on with their life in other ways, distancing themselves from what could be like a party lifestyle, and they're finding that, um, you know, they're the oldest person at the club, for example, or uh, there's no longer people who, who resonate with the, with the vibration and frequency as much of what they had prioritized in the past, and it's from the place of kind of like loneliness and, and kind of um, uncomfortability with, with whatever they're surrounding themselves with, that they're, they're starting to kind of like look within to at least address that part of themselves that says this, whatever this life is, whatever they've chosen for themselves, it doesn't feel good. And they also say, I'm scared you will reject me. So based on what happened in the past, particularly if there was a third party situation involved, they made you feel like an option. Um, you know, they told you they didn't want to be committed and then they turned around and got into a relationship with somebody else. Um, there's a sense of that it will take a little bit more than just, hi, hello, I'm sorry, in order to get back in your inner circle, that trust must be earned and it's 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 uncertain if that can be successfully done. Um, and so it feels to be something that that element of uncertainty is holding this person back from taking steps in your direction. There is a longing to knock on that door, to, to revisit this. Um, you represent in a lot of ways a polarity that is very different from whatever um, vibration they are sitting in right now, the company that they're keeping, what they're focusing on, what they're prioritizing. Um, you represent something more. It's this, it's this higher level, this elevation for them. Maybe this has to do with how you're living your life, a glow up that you've gone through as a result perhaps of what has happened here. Maybe just in general, kind of the quality of person that you are at a soul level um, cannot be compared to other company that they are keeping or, or the types of things that they are um, participating with in various ways in their material reality. And so they're very much magnetized towards you, drawn to you as much as they've tried to deny and stuff. Uh, that call has once again come forth from within them 
urging them to move back in your direction, but they feel to be very much held back or uncertain about how to even course correct, if it's even possible at this point in time after what has happened, um, unsure if they have what it takes within them to provide some kind of follow through to words and promises of change. They also say, I have a surprise for you. So this can talk about a surprise kind of resurfacing in your life, some kind of conversation, reaching out, a text message, an email, a phone call. Perhaps it's been a long time since you've seen or heard from this person. They're wanting to um, kind of catch you on in the right mood on the right day and come to you in a very high vibration. This can also, for some of you, tie into some of these tendencies, patterns, um, habits, you know, maybe relationships that had interfered with the connection connection in the past that they are actively working to dismantle or to rid themselves from. For some of you, they have already successfully closed out um, some sort of cycle that caused them to move in a different direction, something that was very fear-based or, or very kind of toxic or unhealthy. And that's the element of the surprise that they've cleaned up their life, maybe literally have gotten clean and sober or have moved away from toxicity in other manners, um, have gained different perspective. They're, they're feeding different things, healthier habits healthier vibrations, a healthier mindset, but there's a bit of uncertainty about do you even care? Will this even matter? Are you are you just going to slam the door in their face or ignore them? Is it too little too late? Wanting to share this with you, share this good news, maybe even plans to, to sort of um, disconnect from something else and, and make a shift, make a change, but there's a sense of they need to come towards you correct or to not come at all. And this uncertainty about how and if you will even receive then feels to kind of keep them at the brink of taking some sort of step towards you. And they also say, yes, your feelings are correct. So if you've been sensing a shift within this person, energetically speaking, you, you've been sensing this anticipation or that they are planning their approach, they may be getting ready to resurface in your life, this can be that confirmation um, that what you're picking up on is a direct reflection of their focus that has shifted upon you. Even if they're still in another circumstance, they're still living, you know, a particular lifestyle, it's almost like ways in which they have directly tried to not look at their emotions, not look at this situation, just carry on, um, eyes fixed on the present circumstances, not looking in the rearview mirror, that has changed. And so you may be picking up on that where there's a lot of focus on this. There, there's a lot of attention that is going into this circumstance, um, both reflection of what has taken place before, aspects and elements of themselves that contributed to that, questions within. Is it possible to reconcile? Is it possible to pick up the pieces? You know, how to go about doing that? Is that something that's in the highest good of both of you? Is it something that they're ready for? All of this questioning, it feels like it's sending this energetic signal across across the ether. As much as they're trying to be very secretive and guarded, they are nevertheless showing their hand to you energetically speaking. That energy speaks for itself. A lot of you are picking up on that. So that can be that confirmation for you of that. And they also say, I want you to be happy. So this is that confirmation of holding back until they can come to you correct. Um, they may have been planning or thinking about or wanting to reach out for quite some time, but there could still be other entanglements that they are needing to uh, remove from their life, other sort of uh, shifts in their priority or, or in things that they're focusing on that, that need to be vacated before they're able to bring something to you that is productive, that, that will add to, um, you know, a beneficial new start, a fresh chapter rather than more of sort of that stale energy. It's like they're holding themselves back very deliberately, perhaps due to a little bit of lack and uncertainty within, a little fear that it's, it's too little too late, so why even try? And yet they're drawn back to you and to that question of, what if? They also say, I need space right now. So they may be in the process of cleaning up some clutter in their life, clearing up their vibration, a sense of wanting to return, but almost feeling that it's not the right time yet. Um, 
other work that needs to happen internally and externally, but all the while you're kind of that prize that they have their eye on. Um, or even just inside, it's it's kind of the energy of wouldn't it be nice in a perfect world if only. Um, you know, they they for some of you they are planning that approach. They've made some kind of change or or are starting to make that kind of change, and they're sort of sniffing around and seeing, um, you know, is it the right time? Can they come back in? For others of you, it's it's just this energy of kind of like longing, being very bored, feeling very stale and stuck in their present circumstances and with whatever they chose over this connection or as a means to kind of stuff down and suppress the emotional body. Um, but they're kind of in a passive energy right now, just sort of in a holding pattern, longing but not really feeling prepared for any sort of action towards you. They also say, why do you still love me after all that I've done? So that can tie into that idea of like third party energies or, um, you know, just kind of like harshly judging you, judging the connection, um, you know, choosing kind of like surface level intimacy, um, denying their feelings, uh, choosing materialism or, or, you know, the perception of like who the perfect partner would be or should be, what that should look like, that in some way, you know, this connection is directly a contrast to. They may have blocked you, ghosted you, done something very shady or underhanded, almost to try and make you see them as the bad guy or the bad girl, um, stepping into that role of the villain in an attempt to kind of um, cancel out the feelings that you had for them. It feels that whatever this action was, it was based on kind of a, a fear response, a place of immaturity, some wounding within them that they are acknowledging needs to be um, healed. It needs to be mended. It needs to be improved upon within themselves to be able to bring something forth to you um, that is constructive, that can add to the measure of your happiness rather than kind of create more sort of dissonance or um, pain or sorrow or a sense of loss in the situation. And they also say, I'm learning to live life better through you. So they may be very inspired by some kind of a glow up that has taken place, something that you have done that they are witnessing, picking up the pieces from the situation, focusing on wellness, on self-improvement, um, on breaking through cycles, um, patterns and habits and versions of yourself that were holding you back from abundance um, within and without. So for some of you, if you are, you have a social media presence, they could be watching you online, looking at the things that you post, um, you know, and, and seeing this change, this very powerful transformation within you, which is creating the sense of longing, wanting to move back in your direction, seeing you as a very healthy alternative to whatever they are entertaining currently um, or whatever they chose to invest in in the past. That can also really confirm this active process of kind of breaking through cycles, cleaning up their act literally or figuratively um, and if they're not seeing this on social media or you don't really announce these things you don't really have a social media presence this can tie into just vibrationally um, as much as you're picking up on on kind of this focus and this attention you're still energetically connected to this individual they are also connected to you your growth your improvement um, you know your glow up it, it is transmitted to them it's 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 creating a different kind of a signal that is almost drawing them in it's it's coping or encouraging them beyond any place that they are kind of stuck or stagnant in their life. They also say, you are my weakness. You are my sweet spot. So for a lot of you, you represent this forbidden fruit energy. So another confirmation of kind of like watching from afar, maybe even just energetically tapping in, looking back over old photos, conversations. Um, maybe they have saved some of these things unbeknownst to you. You assume that they just deleted it all, couldn't care less. Um, they haven't reached out. They're, they're giving all the signs and signals that they're very unbothered by this on a, the separation or distance on like a surface level, um, but it almost feels to be something that in the cover of night, behind closed doors, um, they do reflect upon you. They do have something, some memento, memento of photographs, some conversations, any number of things that, that they turn to, that they look at with a sense of longing and like, what if, if only I'd made different choices, maybe I would feel different, my life would be different, things could be different between the two of us. 
again, this idea of kind of watching from the far, from afar, watching from the shadows, um, watching you on social media in a certain way, longing to move into closeness with you, um, but not necessarily feeling very equipped at this point in time to do so. So I'm going to get some initials, and this can be a first, middle, or last name of you or this person, or it could spell something out, just whatever resonates for you. got Q, I, F, G, C, B, P, O, W, and J. So those are your messages. I hope that they resonated with you and that you enjoyed the reading. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, or share. If you'd like a personal reading, I offer them through my Etsy shop, and there's a link in the description box of the video for that. I offer a variety of pre-recorded video readings, written readings, and channeled letters. Turnaround time on everything is five to seven days from the time of purchase. I also sell handmade jewelry, dream catchers, and sun catchers if you're interested in checking any of that out as well. And I've launched a second channel here on YouTube, which is called Lady of the Dawn Tarot. There's a link in the description box as well as in the channel section of my page for that. The format over there consists of pick a cards and general energy readings related to subjects such as spirituality, ascension, wellness, and self-love. So if any of that sounds interesting, I invite you to check that channel out. I thank you for your support there as well as for your continued support support here on this channel. I hope to see you again in another reading. Please take care and be well. Hi group four. You chose the amethyst. So I'm going to be getting three cards from three different decks and let's see what does your person want you to know right now from their higher self. Okay, and they say, I am in a karmic situation. So for some of you who are in a no contact circumstance, this can be a confirmation that this person may have entered into another relationship. This idea of like a karmic situation though can tie into mindsets, belief systems, relationships with friends and family, versions of themselves um, that are not serving their highest good can be career paths, lifestyles, any number of things can count as that kind of karmic energy, something that they are wrapped up in, embroiled in, confronting at this point in time. It feels like the energy of maybe even seeing the true colors of this circumstance or situation, recognizing how these choices or this involvement um, or, or holding on to a particular vibration is really stopping them from experiencing wish fulfillment or um, you know just a better life, a better feeling within themselves in general, even outside of the scope of this connection. For a lot of you, this may tie into, um, you know, like lifestyle choices or just a very linear kind of perception of, of sort of who they are, how they've been moving through the world, a, a degree of inauthenticity, um, masks, illusions, placating, uh, codependency, people pleasing, all of these things which are keeping them really stuck in these in these kind of cycles and loops that in some way this connection, you, the energies that were sparked and awakened within them 
or this invitation to step beyond that, step beyond the comfort zone, break out of some kind of cycle, um, move toward a different way of being, toward personal illumination and, and a higher vibration that went, than what they were operating at before. And they may have made a, up a lot of excuses or leaned into this energy of fear, kind of just watching from afar, watching you drift out of their life or pushing you away um, because in some manner their comfort zone felt very threatened, um, very enticed to kind of follow you along this path of ascension and awakening, to awaken in the heart space, to explore the deeper layers of what love could be through the dynamic between the two of you, but then almost fear and, and a predictable um, sort of quiet discomfort within them keeping them stuck or, or making them sort of choose um, the easier path of, of just sort of uh, remaining stagnated and stuck and kind of like looping around a lot of these cycles that may manifest in different ways in their life. Um, it feels like they're starting to really look at that though to, to ad address that, how um, blessings and opportunities in a, in a lot of different ways throughout their lives um, that had been presented to them. It's almost like they didn't take those leaps of faith. This may be somebody who's kind of um, used to sort of watching circumstances pass them by, always kind of wondering what if. This could be somebody that has a lot of regrets that they hold within this connection, you, what has happened in this circumstance being kind of another regret in that box of darkness that they hold within that they're uh, very fixated or focused on at this point in time. They also say you inspire me to do better. So this is that energy of that encouragement, um, that invitation to step outside of some kind of loop pattern or tendency within them to change their life for the better, um, to remove the masks, to, to stop kind of uh, moving around the world in camouflage, but to allow that inner light within them to shine more brightly, to choose better for themselves, make healthier choices choose love over just things of surface level convenience um, or things that sort of feed the ego in various manners. There, there's this call to spirit. There's an awakening, an awareness of spirit, of these spiritual needs that they have, that their present circumstances or what they've known historically has been unable to fill and in many ways actually thwarts or starves out the nourishment of this aspect of something more. That you, in your authenticity, um, you radiate that invitation. You moving forward in your life, picking up the pieces as best you can out of this circumstance, um, stepping into an abundance mindset, a growth mindset, trying to heal, trying to come to a place of peace, trying to make sense out of all of this to create closure for yourself as best as you can while still holding on to that kind of grain of hope perhaps that maybe something in the future will change. All of this it feels like is either noticed or noted by this person by what they are able to observe perhaps from afar on social media, maybe things they're hearing through the grapevine or even just something they're sensing vibrationally from you, um, that you're very tied to one another energetically. So your growth and ascension um, almost pulls this person along in a sense. You're not doing the work for them, but your your ascension almost may make it very uncomfortable for them to continue to kind of remain stuck in these self-imposed limitations. They also say, I'm not happy in this situation right now. So this came up in group two, or I'm sorry, group three. So if you felt drawn to that group, you may want to watch that after this one. Um, but it's tying in with this idea of the karmic situation and whatever choices that they've made, whether this is another relationship, um, you know, a limiting lifestyle, unhealthy habits, patterns, or even just kind of self-talk, um, the relationship with self or, or the image that they're portraying out into the world, um, they acknowledge on a, on a level that it's very inauthentic, that there's something more to them. You may have really reached that authentic place within and they felt very seen and very um, nurtured and supported in that presence and, and with that kind of experience, but at the same time, very exposed. Like, how did you see beyond these masks to the core of who they are? You mirror for them this highest potential. Um, and at the same time, they feel very confronted or are clinging to what has been kind of a, a comfortable process of sort of moving through the world um, in this energy of illusion, um, lying to themselves, lying to others, kind of just living a very false life. And it is wearing thin, kind of the more you grow and heal and evolve, um, you represent the possibility of something else for them in a very profound and direct way that other things in their life 
life or other people they've met up to this point have just not had the same effect upon them. Um, so it's a very triggering experience, longing and yet at the same time clinging or feeling very trapped within um, a certain phase or cycle or, or experience or situation currently. And they also say, be the best you can be. So another confirmation of that idea of you inspire them to do better. You really are encouraging them in ways that um, they don't feel prepared to admit to you. This can confirm that they're really watching you. They, they are seeing this growth and, and they're very proud of this progress with you. It's, it's giving them a sense of hope that no matter what the circumstances they find themselves in, no matter how deeply entrenched these patterns are, um, that on the other side of a painful process of kind of extracting themselves and, and choosing a different path, um, that there is growth, that there is hope, that there is peace on the other side of that. They see your light, they recognize your light, they perceive your light and how that is only enhancing and becoming more authentic with time. And you just doing you, living your life to the fullest in, in whatever way that means for you it's really an inspiration to this person to to follow suit and and to do the same in their own way they also say when you hear our song know that i am with you so from their higher self they may be speaking to you through song lyrics maybe these are songs that come through in dreams things you hear on the radio you know things that pop up even in an algorithm or or you see posted on social media um that at this point in time is they're kind of like battling against um programming within themselves or, or kind of these toxic patterns these low vibrational things from the higher self they're they're wanting to make that contact to let you know that they're very much aware of the higher vibrational possibilities of the situation, that both this and that are true, um, that the in the material there may be a lot of dissonance and toxicity and, and they're very much trapped and stuck in their own personal darkness and from the higher self level, they're right on pace with you. They're right on point. As you are growing and evolving, they are accompanying you in that sense. So this can definitely be like a twin flame connection, a twin soul connection. You're very much tied together at that higher self level, um, you know, encouraging one another from afar, energetically speaking, through your, your separate journeys, your parallel paths at this point in time. And they also say it's not your fault. So they may be wanting to bring forth um, some kind of an apology for choices that were made, even uh, feelings that were stuffed down or for not taking that leap of faith when it was in when it was open to them in the past for not accepting that cup of love you had to offer for not reciprocating in a healthy um, and wholesome manner with you making you question yourself, doubt your path, doubt this twin flame connection if you resonate as that being this circumstance between the two of you. Um, that on some level, not it doesn't feel like what they're ready to admit openly, but quietly within themselves, they are recognizing that kind of this pattern of darkness, this toxicity, this vibration within them, which has been very problematic and is deeply entrenched. It's, it's what has taken place in this circumstance. It's not the first time this has happened. It manifests in many different aspects and areas of this person's life, but they feel very, very tangled in it. They're not sure how to get themselves out of it. They're wanting to change. They're wanting to move forward. They're wanting to come to you in a higher vibration. And yet at the same time, they're, they're very fearful to kind of like take a leap of faith at this point in time, looking to you as an example, hoping to almost mimic or um, that you'll drop some kind of like a breadcrumb, some clue or some hint about how, you know, you extracted yourself from your own kind of version of patterns, your own toxicity, your own darkness, and that you've really liberated yourself. You're, you're moving uh, towards your light. You are the light at this point in time. You're the light in this person's life. And it's something that it has taken this circumstance, it's taken this distance, it's taken them sitting in this very uncomfortable energy, very confronted by the, the walls of, of kind of these cycles that they have continued to participate in that is helping them to appreciate more deeply who and what you are to them, what you represent, what was possible for them in the past, what may still be available to them should they choose to be very proactive and dedicated to making certain changes within 
within themselves. Um, so again, this idea of like from the higher self there, they're reaching forward. They may be sort of sending you loving energy, sending those apologies out, um, you know, across the ether, very silently within kind of these silent prayers um, while they're still kind of going through the motions and trying to chameleon to whatever this environment is. Uh, but it feels like the walls are really closing in. They become more and more uncomfortable. Your growth triggers their awareness that something needs to change within them as well. They also say, why do you still love me after all that I've done? So again, this idea of a lot of regret at the ways in which these unhealed wounds and patterns within them directly thwarted or, or acted in contradiction to the very loving vibration you had offered to them in the past and that was available to them through this connection. Um, there's a sense that they don't feel very lovable at this point in time. There could be a deep sense of lack within that has caused them to put on a mask maybe of an overinflated ego. ego overconfident when in all actuality, um, you know, they're, they're feeling very, very frightened, very, very kind of uh, uncomfortable in the truth of who they are. They may have gone through a lot of sort of shaming at different points in their life. And so they've just blended in to fit in. Um, they may feel very much like an outlier in terms of the true nature of their hopes and desires, the energy that they hold within. Um, somebody who may have been in survival mode for quite some time and you represented this, this energy of moving into a place of thriving feels like they instead chose to kind of cling to this wounded aspect, this darkness within themselves. And it's an energy of regret, wishing that they had, um, you know, reciprocated, wishing that they had um, taken a leap of faith towards you, wishing that they had invested in you and the possibility and potential of, of growth and light and, and love, um, rather than kind of choosing to remain in trapped and sort of limited in, in this energy of stagnation that they're sitting in right now. They also say, I'm in a better headspace now. So behind the scenes, they are processing all of this. Um, this idea of the better headspace is really tying into any kind of illusion, any sort of self-deception that they were very happy in their circumstances, living their best life, um, that in many ways they're seeing that this could not be further from the truth. And this may have been a hard pill to swallow, just how deeply the consequences of that kind of illusion have run, how many aspects and areas of their life this has impacted, how many opportunities, including the situation with you, are now something that have passed them by. It's now a point on the horizon. You outshine them in many ways. Um, and it's it feels to be something where they're still battling lack, but they have at least shed the first layer of some mask of denial within themselves, um, which is a step, a small step, but it's a significant step in the direction of change. And they also say, what's going on with us? So they feel very, un very unclear at this point as far as what the future holds in this situation. What's even possible at this point in time? unsure about how to kind of extract themselves, not just from surface level circumstances, but the inner core wounds that have caused them to kind of gravitate toward these things, to collect this kind of a life, this vibration around themselves, uh, to people their life with certain types of individuals, coping mechanisms, lifestyle habits, belief systems, trends, tendencies, how they've been moving through the world. Um, there's, there's a sense of knowing something needs to change, but they're still in this process of figuring out how to do that. What exactly is required? What's the next step? Um, it feels like for a lot of you, if you have social media, you know, if they're able to kind of glean information about you, they're, they're looking at you. They're drawn to your light. You, you are this example of kind of what to do, how to change, or at least a vibration to cultivate within. It's, it's a point that this person is reaching towards, uh, but they're still in the process of kind of figuring out how exactly to do that, what that is going to look like organically for them. They know the direction they want to head, um, but the steps to get there feel to be a bit confusing or elusive to them at this point in time. So I'm going to get some initials, and this can be a first, middle, or last name of you or this person, or it could spell something out, just whatever resonates for you. Okay, so we have O, V, T, W, F, D, 
R U A and J. So those are your messages. I hope that they resonated with you and that you enjoyed the reading. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, or share. If you'd like a personal reading, I offer them through my Etsy shop and there's a link in the description box of the video for that. I offer a variety of pre-recorded video readings, written readings, and channeled letters. Turnaround time on everything is five to seven days from the time of purchase. I also sell handmade jewelry, dream catchers, and sun catchers if you're interested in checking any of that out as well. And I've launched a second channel here on YouTube, which is called Lady of the Dawn Tarot. There's a link in the description box as well as in the channel section of my page for that. The format over there consists of pick a cards and general energy readings related to subjects such as spirituality ascension, wellness, and self-love. So if any of that sounds interesting, I invite you to check that channel out. I thank you for your support there as well as for your continued support here on this channel. I hope to see you again in another reading. Please take care and be well.